What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. On today's Node.js tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the Sharp library at Node.js, which is a powerful uh, image processing library, probably one of the most powerful and widely used libraries in Node.js for image processing to resize, crop, rotate, and perform other manipulations to your images. And in this video, by the end of it, we will go through some simple ways to edit images using Sharp. And I'll also show you an advanced way to edit images that is going pixel by pixel and editing specific pixels in your image. And this can have use cases in uh, advanced image processing software that you'd like to create maybe for AI. And so by the end of it, you will be familiar with the Sharp library and I have to do some cool advanced things with it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enough being said, let's jump into the code. Okay, so we're just gonna jump into the code I have on the screen here. So I'm just in a really simple node project. I just ran npm init to initialize my node project. And once you're in your node project, you simply want to npm install the Sharp, the Sharp package and import it as I am importing it here. And we'll just be working with some simple examples here at the beginning before we get into the individual pixel manipulation. So for this example, we'll be working with this original.png file. And it's just a square image PNG where we have some leaves there. And we're just gonna do some simple things with Sharp. In this case, we're just gonna resize it and save as a new file. And we're just going to pass in the image path, which we have here, original.png, and resize it to whatever dimension we want and just save it accordingly. So if I go ahead and run this, let's just do node app, .js, we can see that it, it resizes it successfully. Another thing we could do is we could rotate it so we can also cascade a method on top of this. So in addition to resizing, we can add a dot rotate or a dot rotate by itself if you want to. Uh, rotating is very common in images. We're just gonna rotate it 180 degrees and run the same thing again. So if we do that, we're going to go back here and we're gonna see that it's rotated. Another cool thing we could do with this is we can actually edit the, the image content. So if we don't want PNG, we can switch it to another thing. So let's say JPEG. And this could be useful in cases where you don't want to handle PNG files or using an API that only handles um, a JPEG file. So let's just say JPEG. And we could just do that and just save it accordingly like this. And we can go ahead and run this, okay? So if we open that, it should look the same. It's just a different file type. Next thing we can do before we get into the most advanced example of this video is we can actually save an image to a buffer and a buffer is a binary representation of an image. And if you are working with image processing a lot in your node uh, projects, you probably will start working with buffers or you're probably already familiar with them. So we can easily convert this image to a buffer. And in order to do that, what we want to do as, as opposed to writing to file, we can just say to buffer, okay? And I'm just going to const log this. This does need an await because it is asynchronous. So let's just put this in an asynchronous function. So I'm just gonna say async function make a buffer. And we are just going to pass it an image uh, path. And in this function, we just do that. So let's just copy and paste this into there. Um, and let's just const log, or let's, let's assign it a variable real quick to be more organized console const buffer equals this. And we just want to console log that buffer. And you'll see that it will give me a buffer object. So this is really useful. And it's probably really needed if you are working with advanced use cases of images. So I am just going to run this. And it should, um, did I not save that? Let me, let me do command s on that. I didn't even write the function. What is wrong with me? Okay, sorry, it's late. I'm making this video. And let's just go ahead and run it. And we could see that it prints the buffer like that. So now we have everything we need to do something more advanced, which is what you've all been waiting for, is we want to do individual pixel manipulation. Now, individual pixel manipulation can be really useful if you want to uh, edit an image for pre-processing. This is something that's really common. If you want to pass it to some form of AI that only accepts certain pixel values, um, there's many reasons why we want to get down to the pixel level and edit those specific pixels. In this case, what we'll be doing is we're going to pass this mask file that I have here, and we want to edit these white pixels and we just want to make them transparent. And just a background on pixel values. So a, a specific pixel has typically three values, RGB, but it can also have a fourth value called the alpha value, which dictates the transparency. Now, when this alpha value is zero, that means that is a transparent pixel. So we're gonna make that alpha value in addition to all the other values zero, and we should get transparency in this part of the image if we did everything correctly. Now to get down to the pixel level in the Sharp library, we actually just can't simply use a buffer to edit the individual pixels. We will get some uh, erroneous 
uh, response or if we try to save it and we're editing the, that buffer and we're trying to edit the pixels, I did have issues with this. So the sharp library provides a, a nice method called the dot raw method to give you the uncompressed buffer data. And that is we can edit the individual pixel data. So each pixel RGB A is actually, R is a value between zero and 255. Um, G and B are the same, and A is also a value between 0 and 255. And that value dictates the color we're seeing on the screen. That's how a computer interprets a pixel. It's value 0 to 255. So this dot raw method on this sharp object will allow us to uh, get that data, that raw pixel data, and edit the value between 0 and 255 accordingly, and then resave the file. So we're, what we're going to do is let's just delete all this and I don't need this console logging anymore. So we're just gonna work with the, the, the base sharp here that we have again. So I'm just gonna save this. And we're just going to call first the ensure alpha. So we're gonna call ensure alpha to make sure this has an alpha channel or otherwise we can't edit the, that fourth channel that we're talking about, the alpha channel. And then we're gonna pass the dot raw. So this dot raw method allows us to get down to the pixel level. And then we're gonna to use to buffer again but we're gonna resolve with object. And when we say resolve with object true, this will give us two types of data. It will give us the pixel data and it will give us the dimensional data of the image, the width, the height, and the channels. And this will make more sense in a second as to why we need that. And once we have that, we're gonna say dot then. I am copying code from another screen. I was working on this code earlier. So just for time's sake, we're gonna say dot then, we're gonna get the data and the info. So what the, what the info gives us it gives us the channel information. So it's gonna give us the width, the height, and the channels. In this case, we have four channels, RGBA. And next thing we're gonna do is we're going to loop through each pixel or the whole array of data. So this data is just an array of points. And we're gonna loop through it in a set of four because we're looping through essentially four pixels at a time because we have four channels. And if you actually look at this data and you print it out, which I'm not going to do in this video, you'll see what I'm talking about. So we're going through in segments of four, and what we're going to check is if the first data point, the R value, the second data point, the G value, and the third data point, the B value are equal to 255, and that means this is a white pixel, we're going to set all the pixels in that, set, in that, four, um, in that four value segment to zero. So that should make a transparent uh, pixel for that specific pixel. That's as simple as this. So if you, all, if you are wanting other types of pixel manipulation, let's say you have blue and you want to make it green, you could do the same thing with this for loop right here. It's the same logic. I'm just making mine transparent and I'm finding the white pixels in my image. But really you can do whatever pixels you want. You can do whatever uh, fancy stuff you want to do with your image processing. So once we have that, the data is going to be edited and we're just going to resave that into a file. So to resave that into a file, we're just going to use sharp again. How convenient. We could just use sharp again here. And we're just going to say await oh, sharp. Um, we're just going to pass the data. And we're going to uh, pass it the, the raw width height channel. So once again, it'll save it according to um, because we're passing raw pixel data in this case we need to pass in a width, height, and the channels, and we're going to save it as PNG. And I don't need to buffer, this was from a previous example, we could just say to file, and we'll just call that file uh, new.png, just for um, you know a new file name. And once we have that, we're just going to close these brackets here. So that's it. So this should work if I did everything correctly there. So mind you, these, the way I did these parentheses isn't the most professional, you know, but I'm kind of doing this on the fly right now. So let's go ahead, and if I did everything correctly, it should take this mask image. By the way, we should pass the mask image to this function now. And we should change the name of this function. Let's call um, edit pixels. And let's pass it here. And we don't even need uh, this buffer assignment, but that's fine. We'll just run with this and let's go ahead and run this code first time. It's probably going to break because I'm just editing this on the fly. I was kind of in the middle of something, but let's go ahead and run it. Actually, it did work the first time. So let's go ahead and see this. Okay, perfect. So it did work the first time. We didn't really need to save. That's a useless save right there, but we can keep that. 
But what happened is it found those white pixels and of course some other uh, white pixels in the image, which I, ideally I didn't want to, to happen, but of course uh, it's a pretty common pixel to use and it set it to transparent. Now you can set it to other values. I'll just show you that it works to other things. So let's just say 100, uh, 200, uh, 30, and let's make the alpha value, I don't know, 125. And let's go ahead and run the same thing. And let's see what it gives us. I don't even know what color that is, to be honest. So app.js, and it is new.png. So we could see that was uh, actually green, which is, I didn't know that. Okay, so we could see it's in between 0 and 255. So it's somewhat opaque, somewhat clear, but I hope you got the idea. So that's how you can loop through essentially the pixels of an image reassign them to new values and save them again. This is really important to advanced image processing. I'm using this sort of thing for my AI app and it took me some time to figure out so that I thought I'd make a, a quick YouTube video about this um, to teach the internet how to do this quickly and easily with the Sharp library. I went really, I circumvented the internet and I, I tried to do this in a weird way and I, finally I found this library and I got it to work. And one thing you'll realize is before you save the edited image to a file, you're gonna want to uh, adjust the format because if you if you don't have this I found that it can produce essentially a corrupted file um, So you make sure you have the format in there when you resave the data to um, After you edit it because I had that issue as well. So keep that in mind I hope you guys I hope this made your life easier and if it did please like comment subscribe to the channel There are more advanced topics in this channel regarding node and react So if you want to learn more advanced things in those areas, I suggest you subscribe to this channel stay tuned guys Thanks for watching and take it easy